something like uh, uh, Atlantic salmon? Well, it, it breaks my chef heart but uh to to use it but uh i mean that's uh, unfortunately a lot of what's available in the grocery stores are is the atlantic salmon um i think anytime you can get some ocean wise wild salmon it, that's what we should be trying to uh trying to use yeah yeah okay yeah. awesome great if you so, have no choice though atlantic's fine yeah okay so let's uh, let's uh, let's go ahead, Sam. You want to walk us through how are you going to fillet the fish? I know there's several okay. different variations to do it, right? There is, and again, this is the way that I do it. There's lots of different ways to do it, um, but this again is the way that I was taught and the way I'm most comfortable. So that's what I stick with. Um, I've got a, a a glove here from House of Knives, believe it or not, and uh, wow. this is some. Yeah, it's true. This is something that uh, is used. Um, it, it, it works well with salmon skin. It, it, it can be a little bit slippery. This glove will allow the home cook to be able to hold on to the fish and feel a little more in control of it as they're using it. So I just have my, my salmon here. The head has already been removed. So basically what I'm gonna do is I just wanna go right to the very top of the spine. That's what I'm looking for. And the, the, the spine of the fish will be my guide as I, as I fillet it. So I just basically, enter the, the the blade into the fish and you can hear the bones and i just follow follow along as i go right on top of the the spine of the fish yeah. i'm about halfway done and then i lower the blade because i want to get the feather bones that are there i want to get it off so i just slide it down gently and come through and then i get to the tail of the fish and it slides right off nice and then i just remove Gently, the bones. Yeah. Now, when you're flaying too, uh, I do find uh, sometimes, of course, you don't really have much of an option or choice, right? You can buy the, the fish uh, head on or head off, you know, yeah. it's personal preference. But I, I do find it's a little bit easier with the head off, right? Because when the head's on there, you have to angle the knife and such, and you kind of have to yeah. turn it, right? Yeah, they're, they're, it just depends on what your level of, of comfort and, and skill level is, but it's definitely easier with the... Uh, uh, head off, you know, as much of the things that you're not going to use out of the way, the easier the task is going to be for someone who's maybe not comfortable with it. Yeah. Um, so now I have my fillet the, and I still have my second one. Some people will turn it over and do the exact same process. I leave the fish with the spine up. And again, I just go right in again, keeping my hand flat and just following the spine of the fish as I go along. And again, when I get to the tail, I just angle the knife down and then I'm, I remove the, the spine of the fish. One thing that people tend to forget is that there's all the, the good meat that's in here, good salmon meat. You can easily take a, a spoon and just scrape out whatever's in there. For example, you're left with little bits in it's pure salmon meat and it's, it's good things that you can put into soups or um, whatever you want to do these sandwiches, you can cook it off and make salmon salad sandwiches, anything like that. So uh, a good little trick to make sure that you scrape the spine of the fish to maximize the, the yield of your of your salmon. Yeah, for sure, because especially yeah. at this time, you know, time with the pandemic going on, right, the food's not getting any cheaper and you can't ill afford to uh, waste uh, any food. And of course, the yep. bones, right, make a great stock. Nothing goes to waste. That's right. Yeah, you can make a stock if you if you choose. We don't normally use salmon for uh, stock. We normally use a white fish. But uh, again, you can, uh, there's nothing wrong with it. So just yeah. to finish here, I've got a few bones that are left here. So I'm just going just gonna to take them off and just remove the fin that's right here. And now what we're left with are what are called the pin bones. And these are the little bones that run all the way along the fillet of the fish. If you just take your knife and just gently go against the grain of the fish they'll start to pop out and you can feel them with your hand yeah these You're are just using a, the, the, the fish tweezers there right yeah so i've got the fish tweezers here and then yeah. basically if you don't have fish tweezers it's a little bit harder to do but um you these are a good investment in something if you're going to flay your own fish you definitely want to have and you just go along and you can just pick pick out the the bones of the fish as you go yeah i mean i know a lot of people some, don't sometimes they're a little bit tough a lot of people I know don't take out the little bones, but for, for yeah. me as a host, I like to make uh, you know the meal as, as easy and convenient as possible for my guests. Yeah, for sure. 
you definitely want to do that. So I'll get the majority of them out and then we'll move along. And now the part that I think scares people the majority of the time is how do you skin the fish? Yeah. And now that you, so now we've got our filet, it's all cleaned up, it's boneless. What you want to do is start at the tail of the fish and just make a little incision just above the skin like that. Probably a, an inch, two inches. Yeah. And then what you want to do, using your, your gloves so it doesn't slip, is you just want to angle your knife down. It's a fairly sharp angle so that you're right against the skin. Probably about 45 degree, would you say? Yeah, I'd say that. And basically, I'm just holding my knife still, and I'm just pulling on the skin and gently sliding it as we go along. Yeah. I'm not doing anything with the knife. The knife is just doing the cutting. Yeah. And I'm just pulling the fish, and then you're left with the skin that's removed. Yeah. So it's quite a quite a simple task, really. There's nothing nothing too tricky about it at all. Yeah. So great thing when with, we're oh, sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. Sorry. <laughs> I say the great thing with the skin too. Even with the skin, I, I know like people wouldn't throw into stock or anything, but if you've got pets, right? I mean, you go to the pet store and you spend money for salmon rolls that you give to your dogs. Dogs just love it. And it's so good for them. All the uh, omega oils in it. Yeah. No. Very true. Yeah. Just roast them. Thing. Up. Yeah. So now for our, our salmon, what we want to do is we want to create a portion. Um, that would feed two people, say a husband and wife or, or whatever it is. So basically we're looking at about five, five ounces of fish per person. So we want about a 10 ounce piece of fish and we want to make it quite square just for presentation wise. You know, the, the tail part we won't use. We'll save that for another meal. Um, we'll just square off our portion to where we want it and we'll reserve the rest of that salmon for later. Then I'll just do a little bit of trimming and again, saving this stuff because I want, what I'm going for here is the finished look. I want it to look good. If you're going to make all this effort for your loved ones, you want to make sure to impress them with the way it looks in the, in the end, the dish. So now I'm left with my perfectly um, square rectangle piece of fish, about a 10 ounce piece right there. Yeah. Then what I want to do is I want to season that up. And, and what I want to use is some kosher salt, which I have here. And people tend to be a little bit shy about seasoning. You don't, you don't necessarily need to be shy. You, don't be afraid of it. I guess the more you cook, the more you'll learn how much seasoning you actually need. Um, but if you cook uh, you know, a piece of meat and you see how much seasoning actually goes on there, during the cooking process, a lot of that is lost on the barbecue as you're flipping it around and stuff. So you want to make sure you're seasoning well. Yeah. This is a little bit of dried tarragon. And I just use this because tarragon goes so well. Um, with salmon so I don't need much it just adds more of a floral fragrance to it and a little bit of cracked pepper quite simple like that and then we're good to go the other ingredient to make the salmon wellington is quite simple I have some chopped up spinach here that I just blanched simply and then sauteed with a little bit of garlic and some shallot and season it with salt pepper the next one is what's called mushroom duck bell it's a fancy name for sauteed mushrooms that are chopped up it's got again some shallot in it a little bit of parsley a little bit of white wine and so i basically slice the mushrooms i saute them in the pan and then i take them out and i, I do a really fine chop or you can do it in your your um food processor at home if you if you choose you don't want to make a pureed paste out of it you want to have a little bit of texture to it because yeah. that will go on top of the salmon Okay. Then we have our egg wash, which is simply a beaten egg. And then we have our puff pastry here, which is just our, our pre-rolled sheet of puff pastry, which we will use to wrap the fish. Okay. So I'll go ahead and assemble. Sure. Now, traditionally, Wellington's, it's always puff pastry, but you could, there's no reason why you couldn't use some phyllo pastry, right? Just for different texture and look? Yeah, you could. Yeah. Um, it definitely makes it uh, really crispy and nice, um, but you, you can definitely use phyllo as well, yeah, for sure. Wh which one's more unhealthy, phyllo or puff? <laughs> oh, uh, puff. <laughs> oh, puff, right? Yeah, phyllo. I know they're phyllo, both bad for you. I, I was, you know. Like... <laughs> well, phyllo, you can use olive oil instead of butter Yeah. when you're doing it, which is a little bit better for you, obviously. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's what I would, I would do if you're going to do the alternative. <laughs> So I have my fish here. What I'm going to do is take some of my mushroom mixture and I want to do an even coat over the fish. 
basically just spreading it out evenly to ensure I've got full coverage everywhere. Yeah. You, I don't want it to be really, really, really thick because the more moisture you add into this, uh, the more challenging it is for the pastry to stay um, crispy yeah. as it's cooking. So I just do a, a liberal covering of it here. Hey Cam, are there any situations where you would pre-sear that fish before wrapping it? Because I know you, you, when you're doing you a can. Wellington, that's typically what you would do, right? Yeah, for, for beef you would. For fish, I mean, you, you can. Um, I don't think it's necessary in this case. You know, you're yeah. not trying to get your, your, your crust and your texture is all coming from your pastry. Um, and the fish is going to be nice and enveloped in there anyway. So if you did sear it and put a crust on it, it's going to lose it when it when it cooks with the moisture that's inside it. Yeah, yeah. So I, mean, I think the reason why, from what I've always been told, you, you, for when it comes to beef, right? If you're dealing with a tenderloin, that's a lot uh, heavier mass and volume, right? At the end yeah. of the day, you want uh, both the pastry and whatever protein you're wrapping in the middle to basically be ready at the same time. You don't want one overcooked, one undercooked. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, definitely. So I leave my uh, puff pastry on nonstick paper. The reason that I do this is just so it, it's easier for me to handle later on. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some of my spinach mixture, which is one another important thing, Andre, I forgot to mention. Make sure all your ingredients are fully cooled before you start to build this. You don't want to be dealing with uh, uh, warm ingredients. Uh, it's really hard with the pastry. So I'm just going to spread out the spinach on top of the pastry to the same dimensions as my piece of fish. Again, not too thick, just evenly spreading it out. Some people also, Andre, as an alternative, they'll put uh, Parmesan cheese in here, which you can do. You can put Borzan cheese if you want. Uh, I'm just trying to keep it as simple as I possibly can for, for the viewers, but you can definitely add more flavorings into it at this stage. Um, which uh, which adds good good overall flavor to the dish. Then I'm just going to take my piece of fish that I have done here, and I'm basically just going to put it right on top, just like so. Nice. And I'm going to season again because that's what we do. So other than doing a beef Wellington, salmon Wellington, what other uh, variations have you tried with good success that you would recommend? Uh, you can do it with any any fish. Really works well. Um, you know, you can do it with a white fish, you can do it with a halibut, you could do it with a uh, ling cod, you could do it with anything uh, like that. It's perfectly fine and it works very, very well. Very well. Okay. Uh, at this stage, now that I have my salmon on top of my puff pastry, what I'm going to do is just egg wash around the edges. And what this does is it acts as a seal and it will uh, hold the pastry together as it cooks and allow the, the dish to stay completely enveloped together and closed. So you don't want to be, you don't want to overdo it, but you want to be quite liberal with your egg wash. And then a little thing that we do here is I just do a little cut on the corner here, on all four corners of the pastry, and I'll explain why once we get to that, uh, once we get to that point, as to why we uh, why we do that. Again, there's lots of different methods on how to how to wrap your your uh, your protein depending on what you're doing. So now it's as simple as pulling the puff pastry up to the fish, like so, on one side, and then bringing the back side, pulling it up and getting it just to form a seal on the back of the fish, like so. Nice. Now, would and you, then, for, home, for people cooking at home, Cam, uh, for puff yeah. pastry, uh, I know it's a labor-intensive process. Do you ever suggest people make their own or just go out and buy it? Uh, yeah, it's a matter of time. Convenience is key for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of good product out there that you can buy. Um, so I, I think if you can find a good product, uh, you can buy it. It's a lot of work to do on your own. Yeah, um, yeah. to do it, especially again, do it properly, right? Yeah, but if you have time, it's a beautiful thing, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so now that we have our fish, basically what I'm going to do, a lot of times you end up with so much extra pastry and it's raw and it doesn't cook properly all the way through. So this is why I'm just going to cut and remove the extra bit of pastry that I know I don't need. Okay. Okay, it's not necessary for me anymore. And I'll just trim a little bit off. And I'm just bringing it to size so that I know what I have here. And then I'm just basically going to seal it up. And just what you want to make sure is that all your seams are on the bottom of the fish. Obviously, that's the most important thing here. 
is that all your seams are done and sealed like so. Approximately, what's the thickness you're rolling the, the puff pastry to? Uh, you're looking at about, uh, what's that, a, maybe an eighth of an inch? Eighth of an inch, yeah, okay. Somewhere yeah. around there, yeah. You want you want it, don't want it too, too thin, but you definitely don't want it too thick. Now, basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my uh, baked sheet here that I've already got some non-stick, reusable non-stick sheets that are available uh, at House of Knives as well. And basically, I'm going to take my fish I'm just going to put it right on there. And then at this stage, you just want to go back and reshape it, tuck in all the edges, make sure all the seals are on the bottom and underneath the fish, like so. So you've got a nice rectangle of fish, like so. At this stage, you can do a number of things. You can do um, some decoration on top of it. Um, a simple thing that I think is, is uh, has a nice effect and it is something that is not too intimidating for people at home. It's just slight little um, diagonal cuts across it. When the pastry bakes, it'll, it just gives it some texture and some visual look. So you don't want to press hard at all on the, on the pastry. I'm just basically letting the weight of the knife just leave some indentations along. Awesome. And then I'll go back the other way and repeat the same pattern as we go along. Like so. And then at this point, we want to take our egg wash again and make sure that we liberally egg wash the entire thing, ensuring that you get around the edges as well. And so that's can, our. Tell, tell, tell our viewers uh, what you have planned uh, for the Sam in Wellington. You guys have a bit of a project going on at the Victoria Golf Club, correct? We, we do, yeah. We're um, doing salmon wellington for our members uh, that would like to purchase it so it's a three course meal that they get they'll get the salmon wellington just like this uh, and they'll take it home with some cooking instructions and and uh, cook it for their family members at home and it comes with their the accompaniments and like i say there's a, a salad starter and, and a, a dessert that they have as well so great for um for your mom uh, not everybody can be with their mom at this time so it's something that they yeah. can drop off and and she she can cook herself or or, uh, you know, the husband and wife can share a dinner together that's nice for them. So um, well, that's, that, our, that's, that's, almost, our, that's almost too easy. That's like a fresh prep on steroids. People don't even have to assemble it. They just pick it up and toss it in the oven. Yeah, it's the way of the world right now, especially with, you know, so many people being isolated. It's a great way to, to, to go about yeah. doing it. Um, yeah. So I'm just, now this is oven ready now. You're going to bake yeah. this in the oven, a preheated oven, 400 degrees for approximately... I'd say you're going to be about 20 minutes to 25 minutes, somewhere right around there in your in your oven at home. And now, I just would happen. Bother, sorry, would you bother trying to use a thermometer to uh, test for doneness, or are you basically no, just there's, looking at the? No, there's no need. And I, I I have one that I prepared in advance um, that I will show you. That's going to come out of the oven, and we'll just we'll um we'll plate it and uh, yeah. give the people some plating uh, ideas as well. Awesome. So this is one that is finished, that's come out of the oven. And basically, I'm just going to take my my knife, get underneath it. You have to be careful because this one has been sitting in the oven a little longer than I would have wanted. So I'm just going to take it off there. I'll slide it right off. And remove that. So I'll slide it right off onto the board. Again, my reusable um, uh, nonstick sheets that I want to keep. Yeah. Because I can definitely reuse them. Then I have my plate here. And what I will do simply is I'll take um, some a condiment, whatever you want to accompany your meal with. In this case, I, I have a bit of uh, rice and I have a little bit of asparagus. And then I've made a, just a simple dill butter sauce that you can do as yeah. well. So what you want to do for that, again, this is just a, an idea. Everybody can do the preferences that they like. But basically, I would just take a little bit of rice. You don't need a lot of rice because you've got the pastry. Mm -hmm. But but it, it really does go nice with the dish, a little bit of rice. So I would just plate that. And at this point, I'll cut my, my salmon. And you want to be delicate with it. It, it is a... 
a delicate thing at this stage for sure. So if you look at it, you can see the finished salmon with the spinach crust and everything there. So then I would give two slices per person, which is what you have here, so it's ideal. And I would take a, a couple pieces of asparagus and then just gently take your salmon. And you want to show all your hard work. So you want to put the, the fish up so that people can see or your mom can see what you've done and all the work that you've done. And then I would take a few more pieces of asparagus just to give you some height and some, you know, some contrast to the way that the dish looks. And then I have a little bit of a uh, dill butter sauce, as I said, that I've made here. You never go wrong with dill and fish, right? No, it's a no-brainer. And basically, I just put a little bit of sauce in various spots there. You don't, you don't need a huge amount. It's a rich dish already, yeah. obviously. You don't need too much. Just a bit like that. And then I would take just a little bit more fresh dill, just a little bit. And again, just put it in. So it's no, no method to it, no nothing. Just give it a little, so that there's little bits of dill and flavor all throughout, throughout the dish in contrast. And yeah, there you are. Awesome. That, would be, that would be the finished one for mom. It's making me hungry already. I haven't had dinner oh, yeah. yet. Lucky thing you get to eat that. <laughs> I know. I haven't had dinner either. Yeah. Awesome. Well, yeah. Hey, I also want to talk to the viewers, Cam, about uh, I, I brought a couple of things just to show in terms of uh, you can help me out with this talking about storage of fish because one of the uh, common questions or complaints people talk about is, you know, how to store it. So what I've got in my hand here is basically what you would get it in your typical brochure, right? It's basically a whole salmon. And, and the great thing I always tell people, whether you're buying whole chickens or whole salmons, right? There's huge cost savings to be had, right? Because uh, as long as you have the knowledge and know how to do it, you can save yourself 50% in some case, sometimes even more, right? right? So as far as storage goes, one thing you always have to be wary about is uh, freezer burn, right? So this yeah. is how I purchased this at the grocery store. Uh, would you agree with me? Like if you're going to use it in the coming weeks, like, uh, you know, in maybe two, three weeks, it's okay. You can store it like this, but anything longer, you want to properly uh, vacuum seal, right? Yeah, if you can, especially any, anything that you're freezing. I mean, that, that fish is, is block frozen at a really high temperature. Um, and, you know, it's not even, it, that's just a plastic bag cover, I'm assuming. Um, but yeah, if you're going to store something in the freezer for a very long time, you know, vacuum sealing it's the way to go for sure yeah yeah that's what i i have in my hand is an, another one so when i know like you know when it comes time and i get my hands on some great salmon for the the winter i'll vacuum seal up about you know half a dozen fish at least and because you need to extract yeah. out all that air to preserve it properly otherwise it would just go bad doesn't matter if you're talking about meat or or fish right yeah and freezer burn is, is a, a terrible thing right you want to stay away from that it yeah. does horrific things to the products so yeah. yeah. Are there some meats that uh, typically um, preserve better, would you say, than others? Or are they all about the same, like between beef and pork and chicken? Well, I think that you've got to, what you want to be careful is you the small um, stir fry cuts of meat and things like this, larger, larger pieces of meat um, will freeze it longer, obviously. Yeah. The small ones, they, they can tend to get really dried out and stuff as they sit in the freezer because there's really nothing to them. They're little strips of of meat so um bigger bigger portions of meat that you can thaw and cut rather than put in the freezer already cut um helps because the more cutting and manipulating you do to the protein the more moisture loss there is to it then you're going to freeze it which increases moisture loss again mm, so that's that's, that's why yeah if you can keep it into is into the larger piece and like i say process it when you need it uh, you'll have a better result with a frozen product yeah yeah yeah, yeah. for sure yeah. no that's a great tip yeah awesome yeah yeah. So anything else uh, special going on at Victoria Golf Club? Uh, you guys are uh, reopening, uh, I think you said, next week. Is that right? Well, we're, we're hoping to. Uh, the course is reopen. The members are obviously happy to be out there. The weather's been great. Um, so it's, uh, it's nice to see the people back uh, playing the course. Uh, a lot of new rules in place, obviously, for them. 
um, and, and for us as well. And, and it's looking like the, the restaurants is going to um, start to open uh, hopefully after sometime after the May long weekend is what we're shooting for. So that's going to be going to be great to get people back in the building. And again, uh, what's our new reality going to be like? It's going to be interesting for all of us. Yeah, yeah, especially with uh, the weather forecast for this weekend. Uh, I don't know if uh, any of the viewers have ever seen the Victoria Golf Club there. It's just uh, so picturesque. Uh, I'm not a golfer, but when I see the, the pictures of the course there, it makes me want to go just hang out there. It's so nice. Yeah, I, I golfed the course uh, last year before this all started, and it was a beautiful day. And it, it gets to the point where it's not even about the golf. The scenery is so incredible. Uh, you know, there's whales. There's it, It's just incredible. Right. They eat eagles there's everything around and most of the course uh, a lot of it is waterfront um yeah. uh, course and it, it's stunning if any of the viewers are in victoria and you get an opportunity to drive uh, beach avenue or beach drive i should say uh, you'll go right through the middle of the golf course and you can see it on both sides so it's a beautiful spot for sure awesome yeah. awesome yeah. Well, awesome great Great. Well, appreciate your time, Cam. This was really awesome and educational. Uh, I'm sure our viewers will appreciate it. Ho hopefully they make their, some of their mothers really uh, happy this weekend, right? Yeah, that's the, that's the goal. Get out there and, and cook for your mom and spread the love. They love that stuff. You know, they've done a lot yeah. for you. Give it back. Oh, yeah. Just a little bit, yeah. right? Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we won't tell any stories, Andre. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> All right. All the best. Uh, give your mom uh, my best wishes for Mother's Day. I will and you as well. Yeah, and to uh, your beautiful wife, Malou. Anyways, thanks. Uh, thanks again. We appreciate your time and all your uh, great tips and information. On behalf of House Knives and myself, uh, thanks for joining. And to all the viewers, thanks for tuning in. Great. Thanks, Andre. Okay. Thanks, Cam. See you again. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.